Hello friends, in the present video, we will discuss about the standard penetration test. Standard penetration test. This is also a field test, field test based on this, we can find out the bearing capacity of the soil. Now, this standard penetration test can be used for different, uh, different uh, properties, for violating the different properties. Like we can, by using this test, we can find out relative density and also we can find out angular friction and also we can find out unconfined compression strength and also we can find out ultimate bearing capacity, allowable bearing capacity, load carrying capacity. So like that, we have n number of values we can find out this st using standard penetration test. But out of those, let me write down the some important points. Just like in the plate load test, here also you can find out ultimate bearing capacity on shear criteria based on shear criteria. And also we can find out allowable bearing pressure. Allowable bearing pressure. This is based on, if you do remember, this is based on the settlement criteria. Settlement criteria. And also, this method or this test is also used to evaluate the load carrying capacity of a pile. Load carrying capacity of a pile. So, out of all those, these three are the very uh, useful parameters we are going to find. So, uh, what is meant by a pile? It is like a deep foundation that we are going to discuss in the evaluating the deep foundation chapter. But as of now, just remember, we can also find the load carrying capacity of a pile. Okay. Now, so what is this method will do? In this method, what we'll do is that, let us consider this uh, project side. On this project side, what we'll do is that, we will find out what we'll find out here. We will find out the number of blows required for standard penetration. Let me tell you, suppose if I considering an object, if this object have to move up to some penetration, how many number of blows I should apply on the object? So how much force I should apply, with how much height I should apply, or what is the bore hole I have to take, all those in details not required for the gate exam. So the important thing required is the standard penetration value. Okay, standard penetration value. Nothing but a number of blows, number of blows required number of bows required for penetration of for penetration of 300 mm 300 mm that means to reach 300 mm penetration how many number of blows are required so that is nothing but a standard penetration value standard penetration value sir why only 300 even I can't say it because this is what described from the experimental procedures. Okay. They have observed that, okay, if it is up to 300 mm, then they are achieving the some correct values. So if it is a standard penetration value, then you have to say it as number of blows required for the 300 mm penetration. Depending on this blows, we will find out the bearing pressure. How those bearing pressure will be find out? Those are all not required for the gate exam. We only have to remember that corresponding to this value will be related to bearing pressure or allowable settlement or allowable bearing pressure. All these parameters are interrelated. How they are related that they will not ask in the exam. Only thing is that only they will ask you how many number of blows are required. So if it is a standard penetration value, the number of blows required for penetration of 300 mm. So this experiment normally it is conducted in three stages. It is conducted in 
three stages. So at first, what they will do? They will divide in terms of 150 mm. First, they will apply blows for 150 mm. After that, another 150 mm. After that, another 150 mm. That means if the experiment has started here, bore hole, first they will connect for first 150, after that second 150, after that third 150. So this first 150 mm, that means the number of blows required for the number of blows for first 150 mm are neglected. You have to remember this. Why? Because you should, you should not blindly take the answer from the given data. So if you are conducting against standard penetration test, you will conduct it in three stages in the form of 150 mm, 150 mm and 150 mm. First 150 mm, you should not consider the number of blows. They have to be neglected. After 300 mm, the remaining number of blows required for 300 mm only be considered in the for the evaluation of the bearing capacity. That observed value for penetration of 300 mm that is represented as normally N naught N subscript O. Okay, hope it is clear. So, which value you have to consider? So, as we are conducting in three stages, first 150 mm for the penetration of first 150 mm, the number of blows required you have to be neglected. So, after neglecting first 150 mm, remaining two 150 mm only you have to consider in the evaluation of the bearing capacity. Okay, now we have to do some corrections for this observed value. So, let me write down what are the corrections required. Corrections required. So, the first correction is nothing but a overburden pressure. Over burden pressure and second one is dilatancy or we can also call it as a water table. That means let us consider a project site. Let us say you are evaluating the standard penetration value. So here first what we'll do, suppose if I'm evaluating that value near the ground surface, we may get one value. Suppose if I'm evaluating that value deep below the ground surface, do you think the value will be the same? This there will be slight change in the number. Suppose let us say here if you require 10 blows to reach the 300 mm, do you think you will reach only 10 blows here? Obviously I can guarantee that you need more than 10 blows to reach the 300 mm penetration. That means as you are going deep below the ground surface, the number of blows required for the penetration is increases. So if the values keep on increases, then we don't end up with some one single value. So that's why what we'll do, we will do some average here. So that correction, that average is nothing but a overburden pressure, correction due to overburden pressure. That means as you evaluate the value near the ground surface, you may have the less value. If you evaluate deep below the ground surface, you may have the higher value. But to get the correct value, we will do some corrections. That is what nothing but a overburden pressure. Now coming to the dilatancy, suppose if there is any water table here. So let us assume this is only applicable for fine sand or silt. So if there is any fine sand or silt, and if there is any water table, then if you want to apply, if you are applying the number of blows, instead of the sand, you will have resisting from the water also. You will have resistance from the water also. So if you are having resisting from the water also, what happens? Your number of blows will increase than the actual scenario. So that's why if there is any water table, then number of blows required for the penetration is also increases. Why? Because the resisting from the water will also be act. So to consider or to get the exact value, then we have to do some corrections. That is what nothing but a correction due to dilatancy or correction due to water table. 
okay in the next video we will see how we have to consider this overburden pressure and corrections due to dilatancy thank you